Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint a tropical toucan on an 11 by 14 inch canvas with acrylics. So I'm going to start by painting the background of this painting and it's a really vibrant hot pink background. It goes so lovely with the colors in the toucan and the floral and the tropical foliage. So I did this background with three colors. Alizarin Crimson, Medium Magenta, and Titanium White. And it's a gradient background, so that just means that we're blending colors going in a horizontal direction, so a very basic, simple background. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be using this three quarter inch flat wash brush to paint the gradient, and I'm gonna start at the bottom. So the bottom is the darker color, so that's the Alizarin Crimson, the red color. So I'm gonna start with just that color. I loaded my brush in the water, kind of tapped it dry, loaded that into the crimson color, and it's gonna create a very thin layer of that color because that water kind of watered it down just a little bit, but that's okay. Um, so I'm just going to go horizontally across the canvas, so just left and right strokes. Make sure your strokes go all the way across. You don't wanna stop in the middle of the canvas or go different directions, so just very basic horizontal strokes going left and right. So we're gonna go about a third of the way up the canvas with the red, and then we're going to introduce the pink into it. This red tends to be a somewhat thin color. You can see that canvas still showing through and that's okay, this is just the background. If you want it to be more solid, you can go back over with like a second coat, but keep in mind that we are gonna be blending our pink into this. So I'm at about a third of the way up the canvas and I'm gonna go ahead, without rinsing the brush, I'm gonna go ahead and load that into the pink. So there's the pink right there on the tip of the brush. And I'm going to start above the red, but then I'm going to paint down into that red. And so that pink is going to blend with the red because I'm painting over the red. And I'm just bringing this down. Um, I found that this medium magenta does not exactly blend easily with this red for some reason, because the medium magenta is such an opaque color and the crimson one is kind of a translucent color. So I had to work it a little bit more to get that to blend. But it wasn't that big of a deal in the end. So I'm just bringing this pink up a little bit higher I'm going to go up. Um, I'm going to leave some space at the top to do the white. So I'm not going to go all the way up with that pink, but I'm going to go uh, most of the way up. I'm going to get some more pink on my palette and I'm going to continue working up with this pink. And again, it's not a very thick layer in this background, it's thin. If you need to add a little bit of water into that pink to kind of thin it out a little bit, you can. And then, so there's about maybe five inches of space at the top and I grab the white. So without rinsing the brush, basically the same thing. Load the tip of the brush in that white, start above it, do left and right strokes, blend it down into your pink, and then go back up. That'll get your color to blend. So this doesn't have to be a perfect gradient. It's okay if there's streaks in it or if it does, if it stays unblended, that's fine. It does not have to be perfect. And so I'm just gonna continue going up. I want my background to get lighter and lighter as I go to the top of the canvas. So the top of the canvas for the background is a very light pink color, almost a, a white color. I'm just gonna keep going up with this light pink keep adding more white to it. I might need to load more white on my palette. I'm gonna utilize some of that pink and go down further with it. Um, I'm working some of the colors down here just because I decided to do that. Um, you don't have to do that. that. Those colors for you might be dry already and they might not be workable. So just keep in mind, I'm working fairly fast. So that's why I'm able to blend all this really fast. Um, but take your time if you need to and just keep in mind that um, these acrylics tend to dry pretty fast. You wanna try to kind of work fast, but at the same time, take your time, if that makes sense. I'm just adding a second coat of this alizarin crimson down here at the bottom. I'm just blending that back up into the pink. Again, you don't have to do a second coat if you don't think it's necessary to do a second coat. Blend that up 
into my pink and then we'll do we'll fill the rest of the top of the canvas here too as well And uh, having a towel handy to wipe your brush off is often helpful if you don't want to completely rinse your brush off. It gets all the excess paint off of your brush. I'm going to go ahead and get some more white right here on my palette so that I can finish up the top part of the background. And so this top part is a lighter color. A little bit of pink slash alizarin crimson is still on my brush so it's allowing this white to show um, that very very light pinkish red color so I'm just going to keep going upwards blending that in with the pink working that transition zone so where that pink is fading to that lighter color I brush over it multiple times to get that color to blend and then I'm going up to the top the very very light pink right at the top of the painting. If you need to tint it a little bit more with some more pink, just be really careful. Um, you don't want to get it too dark, so just add little tiny bits of pink in there to get that to get to be slightly darker. Um, in this painting, the top of the painting is actually the dark part and the the bottom is the lighter part. So you can see in the final version that it's kind of flipped, uh, but I started at the bottom to do this blending technique. So it's actually going to be the opposite way when we add our toucan into this. So what we're going to do is, I, um, if you want to do the sides, so if you have leftover paint on your palette, you can go ahead and paint the sides of it, but you're going to need to get this to be dry. So those are all my sides painted. You wanna let it dry before going on to the next step. And the next step is we're going to get the design of our toucan drawing transferred to our canvas. So this toucan is available as a PDF download. So you just download that, print it, and it will go on a regular size eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Uh, and you wanna just position it towards the lower right area of the canvas. It's not exactly center, unless you want it center, but I did it a little bit lower, a little bit to the right, and then also a little bit tilted. So there's about a couple inches of space at the bottom. You can see kind of my finger placements, like four fingers at the top from the edge of his beak and he's slightly tilted to the right. So just like that, and you can position him differently, like I said, and then you transfer it and I use this paper. This is graphite transfer paper. You just place it down, shiny side down. It's like a paper that's made of graphite, like pencils. And um, you just trace on the template with the graphite paper below the template and the drawing gets transferred to your canvas. So of course, if you wanna draw your own toucan, you can do that as well. You can also draw your toucan on a separate paper and then transfer that drawing to the canvas. So there's multiple ways to do that. I'm just gonna take my pencil and extend our tree branch all, to, all the way to the edge. So just kind of an uneven line going to the edge of the canvas. And we will need a number four round brush next. And we're gonna use multiple colors. We're gonna start by doing the, the, the yellow chest area of our toucan. And I use Cad Yellow Light Hue for that. So a really pretty bright light yellow and titanium white. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna double load my round brush in the white and the yellow. The white's gonna help with the coverage because the upper part of this is a little dark and um, we want that yellow to really be bright and vibrant and give good coverage. So if I double load the yellow and the white together, the white's gonna help with that coverage. And so basically with the round brush, I'm just gonna paint that whole area in, that whole yellow chest area in. I'm gonna go around the eye. I'm gonna go 
around the side of the beak using contouring strokes. That means my strokes are going in a curvy direction, filling it in solid. You might find that you're going to, that if when this area dries, you might find that you want to do a second coat over it to make sure all that pink is not showing through. So that's kind of up to you. I did end up doing a second coat after this in a later step. So I'm going to go around the eye and just fill in that entire shape. When you go to reload the brush, you can grab different amounts of the white and the yellow. So when you're double loading, it could be equal parts white and yellow. Or if you go and load again, it can just be the yellow. So that just creates a little bit of variation in your color. Next, go ahead and rinse your brush off and load your palette with Mars Black. We're going to do the outer part of our bird, so all of the area that's black. And just go ahead and load in the black. And you can start anywhere. I just decided to start down here. But same technique, um, as in we're doing the strokes that are kind of going in the direction. So right here, my strokes are going kind of curved on the side. They're going in the direction to fill that shape. Just be really careful when you hit the yellow, especially if that yellow isn't dry. You don't want to drag any of that yellow into that black. So just go around the yellow. And we have a very slither top part of the head that's black so just be very careful going there really define that shape inside of the drawing lines that uh, we applied on the canvas so just fill it in if you find the black is not flowing very well I always say this add a, just a little bit of water into that black and that thins the black out just slightly and gets it to be more workable You want to go around the feet so leave that shape of the feet open especially right here we went around that top part of his foot And then his tail, solid black, going around our tree branch so I'm not painting over the branch at all. Next, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. So this is a 10-0 little spotter brush. It's got very, very, uh, not very many bristles. So I can get in there and do some detail work. Um, you can do this with a paint pen as well if you feel like you would have more control with a paint pen. But I'm basically just going to load that in the black and I'm going to outline the bottom part of his beak. So that goes all the way to his face. And then I'm going to outline the inner part 
So the far right part of the beak, go up to the top part of his head. So that part is outlined black. So very, very thin line. We are not outlining the top. So just the bottom part and the bottom, um, the vertical right part of his beak. I'm gonna extend this down just a little bit so it looks like the beak goes to a point. So again, it, you can do this with a paint pen or even a Sharpie for that little detail. And then I'm going to use this brush for the eye. If the yellow part wasn't dry, I probably would have waited. But right here, it's pretty dry. So I'm just painting a solid black circle for his eye. Next, we're going to do the details in his beak. So all the pretty colors that toucans have in their beak. We're going to rinse these brushes off and set to the side. And we're going to start on the far left of his beak and work our way to the right. So I'm going to load my palette with Alizarin and Crimson Hue Permanent. So that's the reddish color that we used in the background. And we'll use our number four round brush for this. So I'm going to start on the far left of the tip. So the tip of his beak is red. And so I'm just going to paint like this area. I'm going to make this like little S line about maybe an inch to maybe three quarters of an inch uh, towards the right and then fill that in solid. So I'm doing um, curved strokes and going in the direction of the beak. So I just filled that shape in. I'm going to extend this just a little bit more to the right. So it's like a little S line and then everything to the left of that is filled in solid red. I want to add a little bit of shading right now. So I'm going to load the tip of my brush in the Mars Black. So just the tip of the brush in the Mars Black and then drag it very, very gently. So the far, far left part of the tip is dark. I dragged it so that I can blend that black in gently with that red, so wet on wet blending. So it gives it a little bit of shading right there on the tip. Okay, so then we're gonna rinse and we're gonna move on to our yellow. So we're using the same color as we did um, the yellow chest area. And that's that cad yellow light mixed with white. So about equal parts mixed together. The white, remember we put the white in there so that we can have some good coverage and it would cover this area. So I'm doing the top part of his beak right now, filling in just the top part. There's a little line that divides the top and the bottom. So just the top part. And I'm going to just paint, I'm gonna kind of drag my brush towards the right and I'm not going to go all the way across because it's going to turn into green when we get closer to the face where the eye is. I'm just going to kind of drag it more to the right but I'm going to leave a blank spot open on the right. So I'm dragging it and I'm going to blend this a little bit to make green. So see that little gap I left open? We're going to have that yellow turn into a lime kind of bright green color. And to achieve that green, we're going to use the color light blue permanent. So you want to go ahead and load your palette with light blue permanent next. So we're going to mix that yellow mixture with the light blue permanent about equal parts and you're going to get this light green color add a little bit more yellow in there just to lighten that up i grabbed a bit of water because my yellow started to dry out a bit so just to kind of loosen that up a bit so on the right side of his beak that needs to blend with our yellow so i'm just going to take it start on the far right side and I'm going to drag it into that yellow and it's going to blend with that yellow if it doesn't blend that's okay it can just kind of paint like you can take that green and just kind of overlap your yellow a bit doesn't exactly have to blend but I'm just gonna go all the way just kind of um, not, I'm not gonna go all the way to the end of, tip of the beak but I'm just gonna blend it um, the far right part of his beak 
is more of that green color. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more blue into my green mixture, just to darken it up just a tad. And I'm gonna paint that little gap in there, green, and then I'm gonna drag it back out into the rest of the beak. Then on the bottom of our beak, we have more of the blue color. So I didn't rinse my brush. If you need to rinse because you wanna get the green off, you can. Um, but I'm just loading my brush in the blue now. I'm going to paint most of the bottom part of the beak with the blue. So I'm doing the same thing with the blue. I'm dragging it to the right side of the beak. So we're just on the under part of our beak. We don't wanna paint over any of the top part. There's that division line that we have from the drawing. And I'm gonna leave the far right of that blank because the far right of that is actually going to be more of the green color. So when I get to the far right, so leave like a blank spot on the far right bottom part of the beak, and then we're gonna blend our green into our blue. So the same thing that we did to the top, we're gonna do to the bottom. So this is just that green color, so that light blue permanent mixed with the yellow, blended into the blue on the bottom. So we can keep going with this beak if ever you want to stop and simplify it and you like it like this, you don't have to keep going with these extra details. But I'm going to go in, rinse my brush off and grab the white. I'm gonna do a little bit of white on the top part of the beak. So just the top part of the beak where the yellow is, I took the white and I just kind of dragged that at the very, very top so that the top part of the beak is kind of shiny right there and it just kind of faded out to the uh, right part, so the top left part to the right of the red part of the beak. And a um, little bit of white on the red part, so I'm just gonna very, very subtly take that white and just do like a slither line, a little highlight on the red part. Just kind of make it look like that part is kind of shiny too. Blending it in, I did have to go back with the alizarin and Crimson, that red, and I used that to just kind of blend it back in. In the middle area of his beak, there is some orange. So I'm going to mix orange on my palette. I'm going to use the yellow and the alizarin crimson, so that kind of yellow light and that red. Uh, you only need a teeny bit of red to add to that yellow in order to make orange, so it's not equal parts. It's about three parts yellow and one part red to get kind of a light to medium orange color. And if you look, in the center part of his beak, there's like a little orange area. It's the center top part. So I'm just gonna kind of paint like a, a oval sort of shape right there above the middle part. And then it kind of um, goes down thinner to kind of more of a line and it goes to the red piece so that the first part is like an oval, then it turns to a line and the line hits the red part. And then there's a little slither of red from the red part. It just kind of goes down uh, kind of over that orange piece a little bit. It kind of fades into the orange piece. So just a thin line. And I grabbed the, the little tiny round brush for that. Next, I'm going to do the two little dots that are inside his eye. So a little highlight in his eye. This is with that little tiny brush and the white. So I'm just gonna add a teeny bit of white right there on the tip of the bristles. And then I'm gonna do two little dots. So very, very steady hand for this. You can also do this with a toothpick. So just one, two, two little dots. 
and that's it for the inside of his eye. We're not going to do too many details with that, but I would like to do something on the outer part of his eye. I want to add a little bit of green. So I'm going to go back on my palette and grab my green again. Um, my green dried a little bit, so I'm just kind of loosening it up with a little bit of water. I'm using the number four round brush and getting that green right there on the tip. I'm just gonna add some green around the eye. So I'm just kind of doing these curved lines around the eye. Added more blue in there so it would show up better. So just these curved lines around the eye gives it a little pop of color around the eye. This next step is optional, but it does provide some really pretty highlight on the black part of our bird. I'm using the light blue permanent to do a little bit of highlighting, little indication of like feather texture. So the trick with this technique is to make sure it's dry brush. So we don't want a lot of paint on our brush. When we load it into the blue, we want to wipe it off or kind of brush it out on the palette so there's not a lot of paint on the tip of the brush. And I'm just very lightly just kind of skidding the canvas when I'm making those strokes. Um, just on the right side, not anywhere else on the black, just on the right side, just these like curved, very light strokes. And I did it on the tail as well, except those strokes aren't very curved, they're more going like vertically. Um, just very, very subtle, light blue gives that black some interesting uh, color variation, a little pop of color, and a little bit along the right side of his back, but that's it, nowhere else, just very subtle light blue feather texture. Then we can continue on and do his feet. So those were done with the light blue permanent. I'm just gonna paint the shape in. So this shape right here, kind of a claw shape, kind of a teardrop shape goes over our branch. And then the one on the right. An alternative would be to paint the branch first and then you can paint your feet going over the branch, but I found this way to uh, work as well. So. Just painting that in solid. And I am gonna do a little bit of shadowing here with the black before this blue dries. I'm just painting in the shape right now. This is still that number four round brush. Then I'm gonna grab some black. So without rinsing the brush, I loaded that with the black. I'm taking that black and I'm blending just the top part of the foot, so the leg, and blending that down into the blue to make that a little bit more shadowy. And so this is wet and wet blending. That blue is not dry yet. I'm just using that black to just gently blend the upper part down into the blue, but I'm leaving the bottom part pure blue. I am going to add a second coat to the yellow chest area. This is optional, but if you have some red from the background still showing through, you can go in with a second coat of that yellow and white combination and just going in there. I'm not even going over all of it solid, just adding like a second layer, just kind of doing some textured contouring strokes right in that area just a bit. So next we're going to work on this tree branch and I did that with burnt umber. You'll also need titanium white and Mars black to do the highlight and shadowing of the branch. And we'll use our number four round brush. I'm going to freshen up my black and white on my palette as well. Um, the tree branch is, we're going to be doing some wet on wet blending to get the texture of the branch. So we need our black and white ready to go. So we're going to start by loading our number four round brush in the brown. And we want to just start applying this brown paint to the brown the branch. We want to go in the direction of the branch. So my strokes are going diagonally. My um, strokes are also kind of loose and wavy. So long strokes going in a diagonal direction. Just outlining it, filling it in. Uh, we want to work kind of fast. We don't want this to dry because we want to blend our black and white in here to get some texture. But for now, I'm just applying that brown to this. You want to go around the feet the best that you can. Um, grab a little black 
So do the shadowing. The shadowy part is on the bottom of the branch. So grab a little bit of black. You only need a teeny bit for this and just loosely blend your black in with the brown at the bottom, but don't over blend. So we wanna leave some areas open with the brown. So we just loosely blend that black with the brown to make it kind of dark at the bottom and a little bit of texture at the bottom. Um, to go around the feet, I just outlined the, the negative space around it, so that kind of helps to paint around it, and then we can go back to our regular diagonal strokes on the outer part of the feet. I'm not adding any more black over here at the top, so the rest of the top is going to be brown. I will grab a little bit of white here in a little bit. I want to go around these feet, fill that negative space in first before I start highlighting it. So I'm going around his feet, foot, and painting this part right here, brown all the way to the top. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab my white, so white on the tip of the brush without even rinsing it. Just grab the white and go ahead and get that white in there. You'll notice that maybe the white doesn't blend right away because it's, the brown is such a dark color, so it's, it may not blend right away, but um, you can always grab a little bit more white. So I'm just loosely blending that white into the brown without over blending it. So the top part of the branch is the lightest part. The middle part is more of the pure brown. The top part is the dark and shadowy part. So just getting that white right there at the top, blending it down to the brown. And I guess the trick with, the, with creating that texture is to try not to over blend it. Because if I just keep painting over it again and again, it's gonna all end up being the same color. It's just all gonna mix together to one solid coat of brown paint. So we wanna try not to over blend it. Loose, kind of wavy strokes. So we took that white and just kind of dragged it into that wet paint. Taking little bits of that white. Sometimes the titanium white could take over if we load too much on, on our brush. So you, you only want to load small little amounts of the white on your brush. And then under the bird, I'm gonna add a little bit more shadow down here. So I'm grabbing the black and just kind of blending more black down here because there wouldn't be a lot of light right there. The bird would be casting some of its shadow. So just blending that black down into that area of the tree branch. Then if you want, you can take your brown and you can extend it on the sides of your canvas. So I didn't add the highlight or shadow on the sides. I just took that brown and just extended it on the side, so just the burnt umber with nothing else, and extending it over to the side of the canvas. Next, we are going to work on all the lovely tropical leaves that are surrounded by our toucan. Uh, so this is a good spot to take a break because there's a lot of detail work in these leaves. It went a little bit crazy, but I think they look beautiful in the end. And so I used a post got paint pen to help me with a lot of the intricate details of these leaves. And so this is a green Posca paint pen. If you don't have a green paint, paint pen, you can use that little round brush and load that into your green and use that. Um, but I'm just going to start with the vines. So there's two vines that I did. There's one on the left and one on the right. So I just drew like a long uh, curly shape, it's like a long wavy line and it curled up to the left. And then I did another one on the left of the painting that curled up to the right. And the color that I loaded on my palette was Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. I'll be using that color plus my little tiny, um, actually not the little tiny brush, I'll be using the four round brush to create the little leaves. It's almost like a fern style vine. And all I did was I just took that green and just made a teeny tiny leaf. So these, um, these vines have teeny tiny little 
uh, oval leaves on each side and they're kind of angled downwards. So all I'm doing is just loading that green on the tip and just kind of pressing down so they're a little bit more rounded on the outer part and then I release the brush so it kind of gets thinner at the base of the leaf and they're all kind of angling downwards. So just one little stroke. Um, you can vary your green by adding some white into it. So when you add that white into the green, it kind of makes it look like those little tiny leaves are kind of glistening and the light's hitting them different ways. So as you make a stroke, um, the greens will kind of look different. So that white is fun to kind of give you some highlight and color variation in your green. And I'm just making one little stroke of the little tiny green leaf going down the vine. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I didn't go make leaves on the curl part. I left that open. And I'm going to do the same thing on my left vine. Then I'm going to do kind of these palm tree like triangular leaves that are hanging down from the top of the canvas. I loosened my green up a little bit with water and grabbed a bit of red. So if you want to vary your green and make it look darker so it's not the same kind of green as all the other greens, um, add a teeny bit of red in there and that'll uh, make your green a little bit darker, a little bit of a different kind of green. So with these leaves, I'm pressing on my brush and releasing the pressure for it to go to a point. So press and release, and it's just kind of hanging down, kind of an ambiguous type of leaf, almost palm tree style. Just pressing down, release, pressing down and release. You can vary your greens. So you can add a little bit of white in there if you want to make some of the pieces look brighter. Or you can do just the green and no color mixed into it. So the varying of the colors will help the each little leaflet stand out. For the leaves on the bottom, I recommend that you make sure your tree branch is dry before proceeding to this step because if it's not dry, then we don't wanna mess up our branch. So we're gonna go ahead and let this dry. And for our lower left leaf, I'm going to draw that in with a pencil. It's kind of a monstera style tropical leaf that has the, the outer edges are kind of um, curved, almost spike-like. And there's holes that remind me of Swiss cheese inside of our leaf. So I'm just sketching this leaf shape out and it's almost like flames on the outer parts, then our middle line, and then the veins, and then I'm just gonna draw all these little oval holes. So when I go and paint this in, I'll know not to paint those holes. And then I'm gonna use my round brush for this, so the number four round brush, and I'll use the green and the white. So I mixed green and white together. It doesn't matter, you can add a little bit of red into it if you want or you can just use solid green. So I'm just gonna paint that shape in. I'm just doing the flame-like edges, just kind of outlining the shape of my leaf. Um, when you get to the branch part, you might wanna add a pop of white in there for coverage, like that green may be too dark to go over that. So I added a little bit more white in there that lightened my green up. I'm gonna go around all of my ovals so that this leaf has holes like Swiss cheese. So I'm just outlining my ovals so that I know to paint around them. And I'm just painting it in solid, just kind of contouring strokes. I'm letting the green and white just kind of blend together, kind of going in the direction of the shape. When this dries, I can go back in and draw my little vein on the leaf. But for now, I'm just filling it in, 
going around those ovals, kind of outlining the shape of the leaf. I can create some more holes at the top. If Even if I didn't draw them in, I can always just paint an oval and then go ahead and paint around it. So I'm just gonna go quiet here for a bit. The video is speeding up just slightly, but so take your time and press pause if needed. But all I'm doing is just filling in my shape. We will let this leaf dry before doing any more details like veins or anything else to it. So I'm going to go back to my Posca paint pen and I'm going to do kind of a palm tree style leaf over here in the lower right. I'm just going to take that pen and draw kind of a curved line going to the bottom edge of the canvas. So that's the middle part of it and then I'm going to use my round brush the number four round brush to do the little palm leaves so kind of uh, little wavy leaves so that with the green and the white and a little bit of red if you want to vary that green so I'm just kind of pressing hard a little bit at first and the base of the little each little leaflet is kind of wider at the base and it goes to a almost a tip, almost to a narrow point. Um, or you can start at the edge of it, so press very, very lightly, and then press down harder with your brush. So basically, it needs to be wide at the bottom and needs to go to kind of a point. And they're all just kind of angling downwards, but they're all just kind of a little bit wavy in style. I could add pops of yellow or white in there to kind of lighten up some of the leaves that are over my branch if I want those to stand out. If I have some gaps, I can create some other smaller leaflets in between them. So I'm just going over some of these with a little bit of white just to highlight them a little bit. So that white just kind of blends in as a second layer on each of those little leaflets. I'm going to go ahead and do the little plumeria flowers next. They're on the left part of the branch. If you feel you want to omit these and not do flowers or do different kind of flowers or do more flowers, that is up to you. You can always customize any part of this painting. And so I do plumeria flowers like this. I start with my white. So I loaded my palette with titanium white and I'm using the round brush. Plumerias have five petals on their uh, five petals, and they slightly overlap each other. So I'm kind of going in a clockwise direction, painting these um, oval um, kind of elliptical shapes, and they're slightly overlapping the previous one. So there's my five petals. I'm going to let that kind of dry a little bit before adding my pop of yellow onto the flower. And uh, while the flower is drying, I'm going to go back to my Monstera Tropical Swiss Cheese Leaf. And I used the green paint pen to draw the vines. However, as you can see, it is not really showing up. So if yours shows up better, if you want to use a white paint pen instead of the green, you can. Um, I'm going to try, you can see it shows up a little bit, 
I'm going to try using uh, the little pointer brush. So the little um, zero, little tiny round brush with a little bit of the white. And I'm just going to do the line down the middle. And then where each of the leaflet points out, just a line in there that kind of goes diagonally outwards. And you can skip the vein details if you think, oh, that looks too busy or that looks too intricate and I don't want to do that. Um, by all means, you don't have to do this step. I'm just doing the little veins that kind of go outwards to the tip of the leaves. That one goes to the point. And we could do a little bit of outlining on the outer part of the leaf. Um, but that's it for our little Monstera leaf. And then I'm gonna load my palette with some yellow. So I'm gonna go back to my plumeria and add some outline to my plumeria. And I'll be using my four round brush for this. So get that rinsed off and load the tip of it in the yellow. So we wanna take this and start in the middle for each of the petals and on the left side of each of the petals going in a clockwise, actually I'm going counterclockwise this time. So just on the same side of each of the petals, see how I'm not outlining both sides of the petal, just the same side of each of the petals going in that counterclockwise direction. So I didn't outline both sides of the petals. That yellow is just on one side. So that'll make it look like it's overlapping itself. And there's a little tiny dot in the middle of my plumeria. And I did that with Alizarin Crimson, the red. So a little dot right in the center. And then I did another plumeria, but this one's more of an orange color. So I'm gonna take my Alizarin Crimson and mix it with my yellow to make an orange. So about four parts yellow, um, one or two parts of the red, add a little bit of white into it, kind of gives it a peachy orange color. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make another plumeria flower on the left using the same exact technique, only this guy is gonna be a little bit smaller. It may have to overlap the bigger one a bit. I was trying not to overlap it too much because that flower isn't dry yet. So five petals, and then I will do my outlining on one side of each of the petals. Just went back over that with a second coat. So I'll rinse and dry. Let that dry just a little bit, but it doesn't have to be dry all the way. and loaded some more of that red color on my palette. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So do that outlining thing only on one side of the petals. And I'm going clockwise this time, just outlining one side of each of the petals. It's okay that it's mixing with that orange. It actually, I like how that turned out. So we have petals that look like they're overlapping each other. And we can pick any color to do, to do that little dot in the middle. I just grabbed white to do that little middle dot. You can keep going with this. You can add more plumeria flowers wherever you want to add flowers. You can add more tropical leaves. I decided just to add, well, I highlighted this guy up here with a little bit of white. So I just grabbed a little bit of that white and just stroked on the left side of some of the leaves. But I did add another set of those on the top uh, left area. It's kind of bare up here. So I wanted to do that same exact style of palm tree leaf. I'm just doing that. So remember you stroke, you press kind of hard at first and then you quickly release the pressure your brush stroke will go to a point as you're brushing down and then grabbing some white to kind of highlight that a little bit. If you want to add more vines, if you want to add more palm tree or the Swiss cheese leaves, um, that's up to you. I'm going to add one more palm tree style down here, the lower left area. Maybe I can highlight highlighted some of those leaves 
on that palm tree branch. But just doing some more kind of grassy strokes down here at the bottom. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint a toucan on 11 by 14 inch canvas. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for painting with me and thanks for watching.